Mayor Hickenlooper, soon to be Governor Hickenlooper. Why are you here? Do you think you'd be in Denver? No, we've, we've been on the southeastern plains all week, and so we came out of, uh, today we started Pueblo and worked our way up. Uh, uh, we, we ended up in Westcliff. Before we went to Westcliff, we were, where were we? Oh, Canyon City, that's right. So Canyon City, then went to Westcliff, uh, and then kind of hooked back around, wanted to come through Slide before we go back. Uh, we'll spend tonight in Pueblo. Uh -huh. uh, Denver as a sanctuary city. Some people call it that. I've never had any problems with immigrants. Uh, are you for open borders? And that no, but, idea of a no, no, I don't. I mean, you, I think you have to have a secure border, and and you have to have an immigration policy that policy works. But Denver's certainly not a sanctuary city. It's, it's really not. not. So that's more of a Republican credo, I guess, or or no, saying no, no, that I, I hear. I don't from know about credos, but you know, at a certain point, the country's got to come around a common policy, right? And I think most people, if you ask them, they agree. You need secure borders. You need some sort of a work out the compromises. So if you have uh, guest workers, you have to have make sure ID that works and you have the right number of guest worker permits, that's stuff all that, you know, if we had Congress that could do their job, that would get all get, be getting done in, in Washington, right? That's what's supposed to happen, it's federal policy. Congress should do some type of a compromise so it doesn't get like Arizona and some of these problems there. Yeah, I think that, that you know, we are, this is America, right? We come together, we, we figure out solutions and we make the compromise and we, we, we move on. Thanks for speaking with me. You bet. I appreciate it. And it's raining. That's it. Mr. Mallet with any more cash. <laughs> Okay. Butch, how you doing? What are you working on these days? Um, well, I am getting prepared to do the next J.P. County Forum Series lecture, um, which is going to be next week with Kent Graw. Um, and so that's going to be real interesting. He's a theologian. Um, kind of talking a lot about more down-to-earth spirituality, I'll say. Um, I thought the title of his second lecture was really interesting. Um, titled, Follow Your Passion, um, Sex, Mysticism, and Vocation. That's here at the Steam Plant. That's going to be at the Buena Vista Community Center. Okay. Um, on the well, Thursday and Friday night, which is, I think, the 19th and 20th. Okay. Yeah, next week. Hello, everyone. Forward to Good that. afternoon. Which, we'll tell them about it. Go to KSBB.net. What a great crowd we've net. got here today. All right. Ooh. And what a great bunch of candidates we've got here today as well. That's the exciting Whoops, thing about sorry. tonight. Oh. Uh, I got my marching orders before I started, you know, after eight years being a county commissioner, you tend to get a hold of these microphones, you don't like to give them up, and that's not a great thing, so. But anyway, Tom gave me my marching orders, he said, be short, and he says, be informal, and let's all have a really good time, and let the candidates have an opportunity to uh, uh, mingle and visit, and that's what we're going to do, so that's going to be a really fun uh, afternoon. Uh, it, it really does give me great pleasure to introduce uh, Mayor Hickenlooper, John Hickenlooper. Uh, you know, I was driving to Granby the other day and I saw a sign that said something about uh, a governor for jobs. And I thought to myself, it, it wasn't John's sign either, and I thought to myself, now, I know who the jobs governor of Colorado is, and that's John Hickenlooper, because John Hickenlooper has created jobs, and he knows how to create jobs. And John Hickenlooper knows how to be a chief executive of a large, major, the major city of Colorado. So John Hickenlooper knows how to be 
governor, and he's proven, and he's proven his record, and he will be our next governor of the great state of Colorado. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Mayor John Hickenlooper. John, good to see you. Thank you. And can we please give a great round, Tim, to Tim Glad for making this all happen. Now I'm going to try and be uh, concise, although uh, it's amazing. There's a couple, I don't know where they went, they, they were just here. That, that, there they are. Raise, raise your hand. They met on opening night at the Wine Coop Brewing Company, October 18th, 1988. I happen to know the date. They're still married. We talk about all the good things you can do in life. Sometimes you do things you don't even know you did. So, anyway, thank you all for being here. You know, I spent the last six months, almost seven months now, circling the state and, and really trying to listen to people. And this is one of those great gifts in life. You know, I tell people that, that, that James Bond, 007, he has a license to kill. Well, if you run for governor, you have a license to visit. And, but part of it, some of it's tough. And you, when, you're, when you're going around the state and you hear a lot of people that are out of work, uh, Many, many people are anxious and fearful about the economy and their jobs. Uh, you know, I know what that feels like. I can still, you know, uh, an old friend of mine, Butch Butler, here, knows back when I was a geologist. And if you talk to him, he'll tell you that I wasn't all that good a geologist. <laughs> but when you get laid off, it's a lot like, it, it's like getting kicked in the gut. You don't just bounce out of, out of bed the next day and go on a job interview. It takes you a while to get your bearings. And I think that's part of what the state's doing. And, and as I've gone around and talked to people, it's not just the fear about the economy, but there's a, a certain level of anger, uh, an anger at government and just anger at the, at the state of affairs and the condition of our, uh, of our great state of Colorado. And I've, I'm running for governor because I think I can turn this state around faster than anybody else. <laughs> now, anybody who's known me for a long time will tell you three things about me. One is I am very cheap, well, no, frugal, I'm very, I am very frugal. Second thing they'll tell you, we, you know, I grew up with a, my mother was a, raised four kids by herself, and she grew up in the Depression, so she sewed her own dresses, she didn't buy any dresses, she used to wash saran wrap and tin foil and reuse it. I mean, and we took that frugal, I heard that, still do. We took that fr frugal approach to our restaurants, and we also use that frugal approach to, to, to how we run the city of Denver. Uh, and I think that's a big part of what the state needs. The second thing people will tell you about me is that, that, that I like hard work, that I won't quit. You can't succeed in the restaurant business without being a hard worker. A lot of 70 and 80 hour weeks. Uh, and I'm not exaggerating by that. It's just a hard business. But, but you're going to love it. And to a certain extent, I think we've taken that and, and we put that in the city. And I think the state also needs to find a, a way to work a little harder. Uh, the last thing anybody who's known me for a while will tell you is that I am relentlessly collaborative. I just, I love bringing people together and finding out the common, finding the common ground. And, and part of it's growing up, you know, before my dad passed away, you know, I grew up a skinny kid with thick glasses. I mean, at one point my dad said, it, it, you know, through your life you better learn a few things. One of them, if you can't talk your way out of a fight, you probably deserve to get whipped. And, <laughs> and I'm the guy in high school and college that was always... When people got into disagreements, I'd find the common ground and get them put down their weapons and, and listen to each other. And, and it, it works in restaurants. You know, anybody in the restaurant business knows that, that there's no margin in having enemies, right? No matter how unreasonable that customer can be, you'll make sure they know that you care about them and, and, and you respect them and you want that relationship to go forward. That's not always the case in politics. Politicians seem to like to put the other guy down a lot of times. They think it raises themselves up. They don't realize when they put down the opponent, they're putting down all the people that believe in that opponent. And politicians often, and just by the way, I still refer to myself as an entrepreneur on loan to public service. I'm not, uh, I'm not a politician yet. I think I've got another couple of years. Anyway, we've been going around the state and looking at how do you take this sense of frugality and hard work and, and collaboration and use it to bring this state together around rebuilding our economy, getting ourselves back on the right track. And I think part of that is I think we have to make the state government a little smaller and more effective. We don't talk about it a lot in Denver, but over the last seven years, you know, we've taken a lot of the basic business principles. Now, government's not business, but we have tried to make it more effective and more efficient. So even as we've 
We've cut chronic homelessness by 60%, and even as we've planted 200,000 trees, 